I am about to change your life. Cue angelic music and beams of light. I've been in the game 12 years and I'm constantly working to change and improve what I am doing because there is no perfect, there is only continuous improvement and there's good enough for right now, but that's never good enough for future me to have in really any aspect of my life. So this video, I'm gonna give you five ways to make your boudoir shoots better. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd, and if it sounds like I smoke 300 cigarettes a day, uh, allergies have been kicking my butt, but I still wanna make videos for you, so here I am rallying. Uh, this video is all about improvement. Like, how do you make your boudoir experiences better for your clients and better for you, just better in general? Because you should always be looking at everything that happens in your business and improving. One of the things that I include at the end of all of my video trainings at boudoirguild.com is that I recommend reflection at the end. And I do this myself. Every single campaign, every event, every everything I do at one of my business meetings, because I have business meetings with myself, I've got to train about that. I sit down and figure out, okay, cool, what went well, what didn't, how do I make it better for next time? Do I even want to do it again next time? And I go from there. And that's what this is all about. All right, so the five tips to make your boudoir shoots better. Number one, stop copying others and do your own thing. Number two, focus on your client's experience. Number three, not everything has to look fancy. Number four, make everything about your client. And number five, ask for feedback. All right, so number one, stop copying other people and just do your own thing. This is super duper important for a couple of reasons. One, because you don't know if what they're doing is even working. And number two, it puts your emphasis, your, your focus on others not on what you are doing, and that is a problem. So firstly, you might see other photographers marketing a certain way or teaming up with certain businesses or pricing themselves a certain way. You don't know if that works for them or if it will work for you. So other people might have lower prices. That's great. You don't know if they're profitable. Maybe they're just breaking even and they're not gonna stay in business very much longer. Maybe they are charging an astronomical amount and acting cool like they're doing all these shoots all the time and posting all these photos, but they're really just paid models and you don't know if they're even actually making money uh, or if the ads they run are even working or literally anything. So focusing on other people and copying what they do will not work for you. Same thing with goes with shooting style. If you like somebody's lighting, if you like their posing, that's great. Uh, but don't just copy them because... Well, then, then you're a copycat. No one likes that. But also, it might not work for you. It might not be sustainable. If it doesn't feed your soul, then it's not worth doing. And it's going to be really, really hard to keep doing that stuff when times get tough. And times will get tough. I 100% guarantee it. It's inevitable in any business. So you're like, that's cool, but I don't know what my own style is. I don't know how to market. I don't know how to do any of these things. How do I, how do I do that if I'm not taking ideas from anybody else? But that's just it. You can take their ideas and you can learn from their concepts without duplicating their execution. Unless, you know, you purchase a course boudoirguild.com. And I'm like, hey, do these things exactly like this. But that's an entirely different scenario because I'm giving you the strategy behind the tactics and I'm telling you how it works in the big picture. Then you can see, okay, this works in my business or this will not work in my business or what do I have to change to make it work in the big picture. But just copying tactics won't work because you don't know what the overall strategies are. So Again, somebody might be giving away a free email PDF guide for outfit planning for boudoir sessions. You're like, oh, maybe I should do that to book more clients. And you give those away and you're like, well, I didn't book any clients. This is stupid. I'm like, well, I don't know. Do you have an email automation sequence that sends people nurture emails that's actually engaging, that educates them, that invites them to actually book you? Like, There's more pieces to the puzzle than just each component that you see. So what I like to do and what I did get, getting started was I would look at what some somebody is doing, whether it was lighting or posing or marketing or sales or whatever. And I would think, okay, what am I actually looking at here? What are the things about it that I really like? And what are the things about it that I don't like? And how could this apply to my business? So if I'm looking at lighting styles, it's like, oh, that's really cool. I like that, but I don't know that it actually needs to go 
you know, apply to my business? Or what do I like about that lighting style? Is it that it's very dynamic? Is it that it's very simple and clean? Is it because there's multiple light setups? There's just a lot going on. It's pleasing to the eye. Or, you know, again, is it a one light setup? Is it powerful with very few elements? And then rather than copy that lighting style, I can just prop one light up in front of somebody and just play for a couple of hours and figure out what I actually like and what comes from right here, not what comes from right here. So that's what I like to do for that. And as far as marketing goes, again, if somebody's got an email PDF, that means there are more pieces to the puzzle. So think, all right, why do people give away email like PDF downloads, Google that, you know, what's the purpose of this thing? It's called a lead magnet. Well, how do you get lead magnets to then book people? You got to know the strategy before you know if the tactic will work for you. So before you copy anyone's stuff, just focus on doing your own thing, but you can learn from others as long as you know how it can apply in your own business. Number two, focus on making it an experience for your client. When I started getting referrals from clients before they ever even saw their photos, I knew I was doing something right. And it blew my mind because I remember one family sesh, I was even like 20 minutes late because we had talked, this is super duper important for a couple of reasons. One, because you don't know if what they're doing is even working. Then I drove to the right location. We did the shoot. The next morning I get a phone call from somebody who's like, my friend had a shoot with you last night. She said it was the most fun they've ever had. You're the best photographer ever. How do I book a shoot with you? And I'm like, I was late and they didn't even see the pictures yet, but it didn't matter because I mean, it, it does matter. But at the time they felt so good leaving that, that they had to tell their friends about the experience. And even though I was late, didn't even matter. They had such a good time and felt I don't know, fun. They had fun out there. And we can say we have fun at our photo shoots and our marketing, but that's that's garbage. Nobody cares. When they actually experience it, that's a whole different story. So for my boudoir sessions, I have a custom welcome sign that I have hanging outside the door. I handwrite their name on it. As soon as they arrive, they're seeing that. And that's, you know, just one step in the process. They've already got these uh, emails from me reminding them about their shoot, giving them tips and preparation suggestions and all of this stuff. Plus, we've had our phone call where we dive deep. A lot of my clients end up in tears on the call because they're doing this for emotional reasons. So we've already got that connection at that point. And then we do the photo shoot. They get their hair and makeup. We pour a glass of Prosecco. They pick the music when they come in. And we guide them through all the outfit selection and all the poses and everything else. And I've even started taking behind the scenes photos, like when my stylist will go up to adjust somebody's hair or like a bra strap. I'll take photos of that because I got my strobes out anyway. They're already there. My clients have started putting those pictures in their albums because they're like, someone followed me around for three hours to make sure I felt pretty. That was incredible. I loved that feeling. I don't want to forget that. So it's not even like a finished retouched photo. It's a behind the scenes shot. But they had such an incredible experience that, that is, that's the photo that they want to take home. But also, it's how I market it. I market this as an experience. The photos are your souvenir from the experience. And other photographers don't do that. It's about the beautiful photos. And I say, yeah, you get gorgeous photos, but you get this incredibly empowering experience that transforms your confidence, changes the way you see yourself, and you're going to walk out of here feeling like a rock star. That's an entirely different sales pitch. It's not even a sales pitch. That's, that's my value proposition right there. And none of my competition is touching that. So that's why I can charge more money and I get tons of happy clients that send me referrals before they've even seen the photos. So make it an experience, not just about the photos. All right. It doesn't have to look fancy to be effective. You don't need the most expensive pro photo lights. You don't need ginormous soft boxes in a huge studio space to be effective. I'm in, what is it? 360 square feet, this room. Not giant, but I painted that wall purple and this wall gray and that one's white and I've got different curtains and I've got different pieces of furniture, five different backdrops up on the wall behind me. I make a lot work in this space and I also use this room for my reveals. So I bring the TV in here. I put the samples up on the walls. I have a table out here with the different albums and folio boxes in it that my clients can see everything actually out on display. It's pretty cool. Uh, I make the most with this space. I would love to have a big commercial retail space. It's just really gosh darn expensive in Silicon Valley. And 
I get to write off a third of my house for tax purposes. So like, that's also really cool too. But again, it doesn't have to be super fancy. You don't need a big studio. You don't need a bag full of 10 lenses. Nobody cares. Can you get the job done? Can you make people feel good? Do they have cool photos to take home? That is all that matters. So if you're hesitating on things because you're like, I don't know, this is all the gear I can afford. Like that's totally cool. I did the first six years in business using eh, two lenses and one light. I had a 50 millimeter prime and I had a 17 to 40 zoom lens. And I used the 17 millimeter for my really cinematic wide stuff when I shot outside. Almost everything else I shot with the 50. And I had one softbox on my light because I couldn't afford more lights and I couldn't afford uh, more expensive softboxes. We have great like Godox options and stuff like that now. But when I first got started, that was all I had. And I got really good with it. And it's why I still basically just use one light for all my shoots. Even though I have, I don't know, six lights now and a ton of lighting equipment, I don't really use it. I use the same two lenses and, you know, one, maybe two light setups if I want a background light. But it doesn't have to be fancy and your clients don't care. They're not impressed by the equipment. Just get the job done and make them feel good. Number four, make it about your client. Everything is about your client. So when you're writing your ads, when you're writing your website copy, when you're doing social media posts, it's not, I love photography and I have so much fun and my clients have so much fun on their shoots. Get more real than that with them, but make it about them. So, you know, talk about their confidence and, and you can write things. And I learned this from my copywriter because she's way better at this than me. Write things in the first person as if they are reading it aloud to themselves. Not as if you're saying things to them, but if they're reading it to themselves. So instead of saying, book a photo shoot and you will become more confident, it's like, you know, what would I do if I felt more confident looking in the mirror? Or how would my life change if I felt more confident looking in the mirror? That gets their attention, that hits home, and then you can say something about the experience, but it's not about you. It's all about how the experience makes them feel. Everything is about the client. Uh, so when you're in the shoots, think about those kinds of things. Do they have a place to get dressed that is hidden? Yeah, they're going to be in their underwear in front of you anyway, but the changing clothes is a very vulnerable moment. Have a place with a full length mirror so that they can get dressed, they can look at themselves, breathe, and then walk out of the room ready to step in front of your camera. Beverages. I offer a glass of Prosecco or bubbly water or regular water. I have options because not everyone wants alcohol, but it's just part of the experience. It's not to get them drunk to loosen them up. It's just because people celebrate with a glass of bubbles and this is a reason to celebrate. That's really why I do that. And I let them pick the music when they come in. I don't have the same Katy Perry top 40 music on. If they want that, that's great. But every one of my clients wants something different. Like we had Mississippi Blues in here uh, on Monday. That was really cool. I haven't had that in here in a while. Some clients pick pop country. Some want techno. Some want classical, whatever they're feeling, whatever gets them in that mood, that's what we listen to. I adjust the temperature in here. I make it hot or cold, depending on what they are comfortable. Like my stylist and I are like dripping with sweat, but if my client's comfy, that's all that matters. I'll throw a sweater on if she wants me to crank up the AC. I won't. I like rarely get cold. I would love that actually if that happened more often. But the point is, it's always about the client. And having the stylist here to help out also makes it about the client because we finish hair and makeup, which is already a great experience for them. Now there's someone, again, helping them clip their garters and lace a corset, zip up the dress, just move their hair to make sure that they are looking and feeling their best. That is making it all about the client. So in the words you use and in the actions that you choose, I should trademark this, uh, make it all about your client. If you trademark this ahead of me, that's cool. Just buy me a beer sometime. All right, number five, ask for feedback and then actually listen to what they're saying. And you're probably thinking, Mike, of course I'm going to listen to what they're saying. They just said it, but, but you can do it with intention and strategically. So what do I mean by that? All right, somebody leaves you a review and they say, you know, they were super nervous, but you had them feeling prepared. And then they arrived and they were really nervous, but they felt welcome when you came in. You're like, cool. There are these touch points in my client experience that are effective. I'm helping them prepare. So they take out all the guesswork. And when they arrive, even though they're nervous there, I'm expecting that 
they felt warm and welcome. Like they felt a warm welcome when they came in. So that's really good feedback, right? But then you also get other ones who are going to say things like, I just haven't felt pretty in a long time. And this was an incredible experience. Or I've never been so scared walking into a place and then so excited walking out of the place. Not only is it important to know those things, but use those words in your marketing and in your advertising, because those are the words that exist in your client's brain. And when you speak their language, they will feel that you have a better connection and they are more likely to book you. So I could write a blog post about being nervous. Oh, you know what? Real time example. I had a phone call the other day with somebody who said, I would love to do a boudoir shoot, but I just don't know that I feel comfortable wearing lingerie. And I'm like, well, you are in luck because you can wear whatever the F you want. You don't even have to do lingerie. You can do the whole thing fully dressed. Still going to be great. We do it all the time. And she's like, oh, I had no idea. So we got off the phone. I wrote a blog post. It was like seven things to wear in your boudoir shoot that aren't underwear. And I just started running traffic ads with an email opt-in on there for the outfit planning guide. And I just got a bunch of eyeballs on it to get feedback. And now that's like in part of my, my preparation for my shoots is sharing that. And if somebody's like, oh, that's cool. I'd love to do one. Not really for me. I don't want underwear photos. I'm like, check out this blog post right over here. And I can give you more than enough outfits that you don't even have to think about underwear. So that is another way that you can really listen to what they're saying and use it to your advantage. Also, she was so stoked when I told her that I wrote a blog post after our conversation, she's like, wow, I really inspired something that, that you added to your, your website. I'm like, yeah, I thought that was a pretty cool conversation we had. And I, I wanted other women to benefit from that conversation as well. So thank you for inspiring me. And she was like, so stoked for that, which was cool, right? So that is a way to make the client experience better. Listen to their feedback, do more of the things that they tell you, and then figure out how to fix the things that they tell you they're not into. Provided, you know, it's not like give away everything for free. All right, so those are the five ways to make your boudoir experience better. Number one, do your own thing. Don't copy anybody else. Number two, focus on making the experience for the client. You'd think I just talked about these and have them all memorized at this point. Uh, number three, it does not have to be fancy to be effective. Number four, that one was make it about your client. And number five, ask for feedback and actually listen to what they say. So I know I mentioned a lot in today's video, uh, different trainings like how to be a CEO, which is great. Things like how to have meetings with yourself, how to actually be an effective boss if you want to be your own boss, because most people have no idea what that means. So that lives over at the Boudoir Guild. I've also got all the different marketing techniques that I do to book multiple six figures in revenue living over there. So head over to boudoirguild.com. You can check that out. And I have some other killer videos on this channel as well about improving your client experience, lighting, posing, marketing, all the good stuff. I am here for you. And my voice is about toast. I'm going to check out. You're amazing. I will see you inside.